Hello, this is Heng from Cambo Tutorial. Today we will look at how to create Android app with in-app update feature, means the user can update our app without accessing the Play Store. Maybe some other users would disable their auto updates in the Google Play Store. So in-app update could have the developer remind their user to get the latest version of the app by triggering the pop-up dialog and ask them to download updates inside the app directly. So and this is the final results that we're going to achieve today. We will implement both types. One is the flexible and another one is the immediate types. We're going to do from scratch and about the testing is a little bit complicated. So we're going to talk at the end of this video step by step. For the flexible type, we'll show a dialog and allows the user download in the background. And the user will be able to continue using app without awaiting while downloading the update. And for the immediate types, it's a full screen dialog that we have to wait in the update download completely before we can continue using the app. So without further ado, let's get started. For previous site, please note that in app update feature, that's gonna work at least API 21, which is Android 5 or above. And play call dependency 1.5.0 or latest version. So please check that before we do. If we pass these requirements, then we're gonna go to the syntax. Now we're gonna define a private app update manager in global so that we can use in any methods later on. On create methods, we're gonna instant object of the app update manager. And then we get the app update info, which is an object task dot on success listener. And then we have to implement the listener with the overriding on success method. So on success here, we we'll give the update information from the Play Store. So when we allow it the first time, the app gonna check do we have update available. So to do that, we're gonna say if update availability is update availability dot available and the update types allow update type is flexible then we're gonna show the dialogs the dialog is gonna be generated by itself so let's say ape update manager dot start update flow for result and here there are a few parameters that we need to pass in but first the ape update info and then the app update type that's gonna be flexible and what activity is and then the request code So we're going to define a constant integer. Let's say 100. And this request code, we can put any number, random number. The purpose of this value is to identify what kind of results come from. And the request code will path through on activity result methods. For basically in activity, we have a superclass methods on activity result. And this will be called in the future. If you firmly implement with the asking permission Android in runtime, you will need this kind of request code to check in some conditions. So now let's just paste those as a parameter. For this single line code, we'll show the dialog if an update is available. But this method is gonna throw an exception, so we're gonna wrap that with a try cut block. And then the chaining methods we can listen if the task request fail with on add fail listener, but we're not going to do that. At the moment I have said about request code will give the results on activity result methods. So in activity we can override that methods on activity results in this case. But this methods gonna get call when we have interact with the update dialog. For example, let's say okay, if update dialog appear. As I am user, I saw that it was a light side to update and I don't want to update right now. And then I just click close dialog so the result will be cancel. And then we can check whether if we want to user continue using our app or exit the app. So first we're gonna check if the request code equal to request code update and the result code is not okay. 
and then we're gonna tell us a message. I'm gonna say it's cancel. Again, check the request code in here is not essentially because we know that exactly that only this request codes will be produced. But if we do it with the asking permission or something, we may check where this request code to identify our each of those. Okay, while downloading or finish download or we got fail, we can drag those via a listener. We simply do this by saying private install update status. And then we're gonna implement the method. And this parameter provides some methods allowed to check. For example, when we download the finish and we want to show the snack bar to tell the user it's ready for install and the action click to install. So to do that, let's say if state.install status equal to install status. Okay, so in here, there is a different status that we can use. For another example, flexible update, we can use a downloading the status for showing the progressing bar or the percentage via this parameter by calculating the download size and the complete size. But now we're not going to do that. We're gonna use downloaded status. And now we're gonna define a method for doing snack bar. In here, we're gonna create a snack bar with the action button for the user click install. A snack bar dot make for the first argument is the view. And then the text that's gonna be a new app is ready. And at this parameter for the duration, that's gonna be infinite because we don't want the snack bar to disappear. And then the action just by saying a snack bar dot set action and then the text. And the last we're going to implement on click listener that's we're gonna call the method complete update to install and restart the app manually. And then we're gonna show the snack bar. Edit listener is not ready to register, so in uncorrect methods, we're gonna register that. And then when a user stop using app or exit the app, we're gonna to unregister it back. And now let's build this for testing. Okay, here we go. So if I click a close button, that show a toast message can sell, which is we implement on activity result. Now let's relaunch the app again. At this time, we're gonna click on the update. Let's see how it's work. Actually, it is downloading in the background. And after the finished download update, the snack bar appear. Now we're gonna click install. As we can see that the app installed and relaunch it by itself. So alright, now we're going to make some change for immediate type update. So there is no far different change. Here we just change immediate constants. Immediate updates we not required to register listener. We can skip that because after downloading the update, it's automatically install and relaunch the app without calling the complete update methods. But in resume method, we're gonna copy from this line. And then we're gonna change the update availability status to the developer trigger update in progress. 
We do this because during the update, if the user close or terminate the app, the update should continue to download or install in the background without the user confirmation. And to restore the UI downloading, we have to confirm with this statement. And now let's see how it's going to be show up. We can see there is a full screen dialog overlay on the activity. And if I click update, that's going to be download and install automatically. Cool. We don't have to do anything, right? Okay, now let me explain how we actually test this app and show the UI like this. Actually, the testing is a little bit tricky to do. If you write code the same, but the UI dialog play store does not show up, it not really means your code is incorrect, but it's about testing. For my case, we need a developer console that we have existing published the app in the Play Store. And this is my app that I have built and live in the Play Store. So I just pretend to be this app by copy the ID or package from the URL and replace inside the Gradle file. And then we're gonna change the version code to the highest number. For example, I place here 10 so that the Play Store could check this value, which is the higher is the latest one. And now we start sync and build with the signing package APK and then upload into the internal app sharing. We do that with the email developer console account that we already have the light app. If we see the message, you don't have permission to use the internal app sharing for and then the package name. And this means you try to upload the app with the package ID, which no exists in the live play store and must be your own app. That's why I just copy my live app ID and paste it inside the greater file. Then we need to change the version code value to the lower one. For example, 1234, which is lower than the previous one, and we're gonna upload it again. For the internal app sharing, can be visible to the allow the tester only. To do so, in a play console, select the target app, and then go to the setup, internal app sharing. In the next tester section, we can choose the options. For example, I'm going to choose the first one for anyone can download if they have the link. Or you can choose the second one, but you have to add a specific text email over here. And then just click save change. And now prepare your phone or email letter to get a link from the internet app sharing. For me, I use the real device. And before we can get the link, we have to enable developer mode in the Play Store. By tapping on the Play Store version, until the developer mode is turned on. And we're gonna see the internal app sharing here. And then just turn it on. And now we're gonna install the lower version at first. And after that, I just open the new link for the latest one to refresh the link in the Play Store. And we're gonna see the button update here, but do not click on update on that. Just leave it here and close the Play Store. Then we're gonna relaunch the app and we finally see the dialog pop up in front of you. Okay, all right guys, hopefully this is gonna be help. So if you have any other methods, please share it by leaving the comment down below and please subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video. Bye bye.